right, good morning, grade 11s. Uh, today's exercise, we're looking at page 7.3, very similar to page 7.2 that you've done before. Okay, but if we go to task, it reads as follows. Draw to scale 1 to 1, a top view, using point A as a reference to complete the front view. And obviously, you want to be able to do the developments as well from that. Uh, label both surface developments and show all the necessary constructions, and there will not be any hidden detail. Then if we go to the diagram, you can see that we've got two cylinders. Again, the diameter for both are the same, just like before, also 38. The height is 60. The center line is at 30 degrees. With other words, if we look at the top, you can see that the two centers are parallel with the vertical plane. While in the front view, we can see that the base of the primary is horizontal with, or parallel rather, with the horizontal plane, and the center is at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane. Okay, so they do penetrate. There must be some kind of a penetration line here as well, but in the top view, the penetration line is already visible there, which is exactly half that circle. But unlike before, this time we're going to see the base at an angle. So it will form this kind of oval. Now remember, guys, that effectively interpenetration developments are two drawings. Okay, so the inter interpenetration part is a drawing on its own, and then you also need a different set of skills to be able to do the developments. Right. So to start, I'm going to go to the starting point, and we're going to draw what we can. Okay. So first, I'm going to draw the top view. This is the primary for now, and of course, the circle has a radius of 19 and the height of course is 60 the gap between the views it doesn't matter i made mine one centimeter you can make it more if you want you also want to add an xy line just to separate the views and then immediately after that i started by adding my centers now if we go back to the diagram to find this center all you do is you go from this corner up by 30 millimeters you get this point then you draw a construction line through there uh, 30 degrees and then on that construction line you can mark down your center so not difficult to find at all you'll see i've made mine quite a bit longer and then i've also added this cross center here okay so for the auxiliary view so long and i put it quite far away from the front and top view and the center the two centers are of course in line but they don't have to be next we're going to do this construction now, it's a little bit long-winded, okay? But what you're going to do in the front view in order to find the outline of the secondary or the branch, you're going to take, let's say, this point where the two centers meet. So this is why you need the center first. So where the two centers meet, you draw a construction line at 60 degrees through that point. Then on that construction line, you measure the radius on each side. So we know it's 38, so it's 19 and 19 on both sides. Then you take these two points and you project to the left at 30 degrees. Then you mark, and then you take the top line and you draw extended out of the construction line. And when it hits this line, then you go down at 60 degrees and that will give you the base of the branch. And then you can just go and make those parts solid. Okay, so not that difficult to do if you follow it step by step. So looking at the page here, we can see that the top view is, the primary is complete. Yeah, it's mostly complete, but we also need this. So to do the branch in the top view, first we're going to need to construct the auxiliary view. So if we go here, you'll see that the auxiliary view again is a full circle. You can do half a circle as well and divide into 12 with 36 degrees set square. So that angle there is 60, that angle there is 30, and obviously that's horizontal and vertical. And you do the same in the top view, exactly the same circle, same size of 38 diameter. And you go at 60 degrees and at 30 degrees through the center. And that will give you the divisional segments you're going to need on the auxiliary view as well. So that will represent the base of the branch. So in order to find the base in the top view, it's not difficult to do it all. All you're going to do is you're going to take the points from the auxiliary view and you're going to mark it down on the base so obviously you need to the line the outline of the branch first you're going to mark these points there 
And obviously, I don't have to project the silhouette here on the side because this corner and that corner is already marked down if you've drawn that. And then you take those lines straight down. So basically, you just wear the two crisscross. You take the seven points down. You take the seven points from this auxiliary view, and I'm saying seven is 12, but some of them are behind each other, so you don't need to repeat. So you take the same seven points here, draw it across, and then you get this little grid, and then all you have to do is, let's say, start on top of the middle, you can go down and left, and down and left, and down and left, and then you can actually go and just plot the points. Okay, and please don't forget to draw the silhouette lines of the branch here as well. Now, you can do this freehand. Uh, just do it very light first, and when you're happy with the result, then you make it dark. Otherwise, please use a French curve. And there it is. Okay, so our top view is done. Then, in order to find the line of penetration, you're going to follow the same method. So, the, basically the same method I used to find the base, you're also going to use to find the line of penetration in the front view. <clears throat> so, what you're going to do is same seven points we had before, but you, you just extend them further. Okay, and the same seven lines that we had in the top view, but also you extend them further than the base. So the grid stop there, you just go a little bit further. Okay, so take these seven points up. Okay, so let's take the first one. So what's remember that where the two meet, you actually have a point in the top and the bottom. Okay, so you go up and it's already there where the two cylinders meet on the side. Both a point at the top and a point at the bottom. Then you take the next point up. Obviously, it's just going to go inward. Okay, it follows the next line. So again, you just go from the bottom up one point and you go from the top down one point. Okay, so there you can see the point here and here. And the next one, again, you just follow the lines down. There's the two points. And last but not least, these two, although there's one front and back, they are in line. And that will be in the middle on the center itself. And that's basically how you're going to plot your points. And then all you have to do is to go and connect them. Now, it just so happens that if you were accurate, they should form straight lines. Okay. If you were inaccurate somewhere or your angle was slightly out or something wasn't quite right, you won't get straight lines, but they are supposed to be. Okay. But try not to force it. If they're not straight on your page, uh, we do mark with a mistake, but if you force it and you carry the mistake over, that could be you could could be more detrimental to your marks than anything else. Okay, and there it is. The, the interpenetration is complete. Here's the front view with the line of penetration. There's the top view with the base that you've drawn. So you can see that the way we find the base here and the way we find the interpenetration line in the front view is basically the same method. Now, in today's exercise, I'm actually going to start with a primary development, okay, or the main pipe, okay. So, the main pipe, I'm talking about the vertical one here, and the top view is the circular view that you can see there. So, again, the same construction lines that we had before, okay, these are not new lines, okay, I just cleaned it up a bit. So, we're going to use the same lines that you had before in order to find both the primary and the secondary. So, in the top view, you can see that the points of penetration are exactly in line with your segment points. So if we took the top view and we divide it into 12 with our 36 degree set square, we'd actually get 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19. Same as in the previous exercise. So these seven points, okay, although keep please keep in mind that there's actually one, two, three, four, five points below that's also penetration points, because while you can only see the top seven. There's five below it, under five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That will actually form the 12 points that you're going to need. Okay. So uh, from four to 10 are the points of penetration for the primary or for the main pipe. And so we're going to use the same points that we had before. All seven of them. Again, five is behind these as well because it's symmetrical in the front and the back. Then just start with the primary. We're simply going to go and take the height and project it across, okay? Decide on a gap, doesn't matter what it is, and then determine the length that we're going to need. Now, if I unroll the cylinder, obviously going to form a rectangle. So to calculate that, you simply go to your calculates and say yes. 
So pi times diameter. So the diameter in this case, of course, is 38. And that will give us a length of 190.3. And obviously, you can round it off to 119. And then you mark down that length on there. And the outline can be dark lined straight away. Immediately after that, you want to go and to divide the length into 12 equal parts by using your divisional construction. But please take in mind, can you measure the distance, divide by 12, and just mark them down? Yes, you can. That's less accurate in the exam. You also get marks for doing this. Okay. Then you're going to just take the 12 points down. You can see there are 12 blocks effectively, 13 lines or 12 blocks. And then we're going to take the point across. Okay. So it's actually not that complicated. You just take the same 12 points. You see seven, but there are five behind. So you take these same points across, and that will basically give us the grid that we're going to need in order to plot our points. Now, please keep in mind. Okay, because we have to have the hole in the middle, I'm going to cut the cylinder open here by number one. The hole will be in the middle. Okay, so we're going to unroll it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and back to one because we cut it open there. So when I go to the primary development or the main pipe, we, you can number it. Now, the numbering doesn't count, it's not compulsory. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I do find that it helps a bit. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, and back to 1. But I, here I only numbered the lines that will be used for the penetration points because it makes it easier to see which ones we're actually going to use. So effectively, if we go to the top point here, okay, obviously that's going to be at 7, smack in the middle. And then you go down and left and down and left. And each time you plot a point, down and left, okay, and you stop at four. And then you go down and right, down and right, down and right, and you're back at seven. And then you just repeat on the other side because it is symmetrical. So if I plot the points, it would look something like this. Again, please don't draw circles. You can just put on a dot. I'm using circles so that you can see it clearly. So there's seven, seven repeats at the bottom. See, in, almost in every case except the sides, you have a point at the top and the point to the bottom. And that's why at the top view, when I'm talking about 0.6, it's actually two of them. So there's one at the top where the cylinder penetrates and one below that as well. All right, so after you've got this, you can just go and connect it. Now, again, if you do the whole freehand, please do it light first before you make it solid. And that is effectively our primary development complete. So it will look exactly like this but please do not forget to add your fold line to so the original construction lines that you had running down here now you can go over those lines and make them broken lines okay so they should be b lines as well so they're in between dark and light okay so if a lines are your solid lines and c is construction then b is kind of like in between so the outline is nice and solid the hole is nice and solid the construction are C lines or very light lines, and the fold lines are B, kind of like in between. All right, and that is our primary development complete. You can see it's actually not that complicated. Now for the secondary development or the branch, all right, we know that because both the hammers for the branch and for the main has a diameter of 38. So it will have exactly the same length as the primary. So you can actually take the length and just project it down. And that will give us the base that we hear that we're going to need. Okay. And then after that, you're going to go and again divide into 12. Should you do another construction like this? Yes, you should. Okay. But to save time, I've just taken the lines from this view and just projected it down again. You can make these lines longer than you need it because you don't know where it's going to stop. Okay, so just make them long enough. Then I'm going to number it like this. So if I go to the front view, the front view contains all the true lengths of the fold lines that we're going to need for the branch. So this is a true length, and the center is a true length. So from the base to where it penetrates. So from the base there at F where it penetrates and so on. Now instead of going from one to seven and so on, 
I've decided for the branch, I'm going to number it uh, with letters. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G in front and then behind it. Remember, it's a circle, so there's points running behind it. Then you've got H, I, J, K, and L running behind it to give us our 12 points. So when I go to the secondary development, I've numbered the same way. So I go from A to L and then back to A, Y, A, because remember that we when we do a, the branch development, we always start with the shortest line or corner. That's where we're going to cut it open. If the shortest line was here, that's where we would start. But because it's here, we're going to cut it open there. So A is going to repeat on both sides of the development. Okay, and that's why I have that little scissor symbol there. Okay. So we're starting on A as long as you number it the same way. So all you're basically going to do is with your divider, compass, or ruler, you're going to take the distance of A to the penetration point, and you're going to mark it down on A. You're going to take the distance from B to the penetration point and mark it down on B. Okay? Well, you already know that this one is symmetrical. So to save time, okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, I'm going to draw the grid across. So I'm going to take all these distances that I have here from A to B to C to D and so on, okay? And I'm, I've marked them down with little horizontal lines like this going across, and that will just give me a grid again. Now, to plot the points, I'm going to do it from the sides inward. It will save you some time by doing them two at a time. So you can see here I'm starting on A, so A is on both sides. Okay. Then I'm going to plot point B, okay, and L at the same time. It just goes up one level. So again, you just move one block to the side and go up one. Then I go and do C and K. And then you'll see I've skipped a couple. So why did I skip these three lines? So if we go here, if I take the distance from the base, so imagine there's a 60 degree construction lines running across. Then you can actually see that the fourth one, or D and J, is further than the last three. Okay, And that's why we skipped from this one, you can see this one stopped here. Okay, so C and K stopped here. And then we didn't go to this level, we actually went to the highest level. So we went from this point, skipped these three, and then went there. Okay, so and this is why I did the same here. So I skipped these three lines and then I went to the top point. Then the next point. Now we're going down and right again, and then we're going down and right again one block, and then the last point, we're going to plot smack in the middle, which is of course here. And that gives you a nice, it looks almost like a upside down smile, and then we can just go and connect the outline, which of course should be dark, okay, or A lines, and then we can add our fold lines in between. So please take into account that just like with the primary, if you ha you have to show the fold lines as a B line, and you must leave your constructions light enough so it doesn't obstruct your drawing itself. Okay. So if I can just remove these constructions, and there you can see it again. The numbering isn't compulsory, and this is what your branch will look like when it's developed. Okay. And that's it, guys. We are done.